Welcome to the Divorce Survival Guide podcast, where we have open and honest conversations about co-parenting, separation, divorce, and the hardest question of all, should you stay or should you go? I'm Kate Anthony, your Divorce Survival Guide, and I'm here to help you navigate some of the roughest waters you've ever swum in and answer some of your toughest questions. I've been to hell and back, and now it's my mission in life to help you get to the other side of this process with your sanity and your heart intact. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you here. So this is my very first Q&A episode, and I really hope that it inspires and sparks more of you to send in questions because we've gotten some great questions so far, and I want more of them. So if this episode inspires you to send in a question that I will answer uh, on on a podcast coming up... Um, you can go to kateanthony.com slash questions, and there's a place for you to record your question. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to get to the first question in a minute. But first, I want to tell you guys that Saturday, um, February 5th, is the Divorce Survival Guide podcast's fourth birthday. I am so grateful. I'm so, so grateful to you guys. I mean, I honestly, when I started this, it was like, I don't know, I'll start a podcast. Sure, we'll talk about it. We need to talk about this stuff. And now um, the podcast has over 55,000 uh, downloads every month. Um, as most of you know, we hit oh, we're well over a million <laughs> downloads of all time. Clearly, this is content that you want um, and that is needed in the world. And I am so grateful that you've been tuning in for the last four years to receive this content from me um, and to welcome my guests, my incredible, incredible guests, without whom this podcast would be nothing. I mean, maybe not nothing, but, you know. They're a pretty big part of it. Yeah. And so I just wanted to say thank you. I'm so grateful. Happy birthday to my <laughs> my youngest baby, the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. And so first, we're going to hear from Juliana. So here is her question. My name is Juliana. Um, I've been married for seven or eight years. We've been together for 10. We have two children since we've had children. I have been deeply unhappy. Our marriage has changed. It has shifted. He doesn't help. He sleeps all the time. I literally feel like a single parent already. And I've been thinking about leaving pretty much since I had my first child almost seven years ago. And just recently, I feel like I'm finally ready to do it. But I feel so much guilt because he is a good dad. He does have moments of being a good husband. There's a lot of good, but I'm just so unhappy. Is being unhappy and not fulfilled and not even willing to work on the marriage any longer because I felt this way for so long a good enough reason to leave? You know, can I leave just because the relationship doesn't serve me? And feeling that way makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel like a bad person. And I just need some clarity on that. Juliana, I love this question. And I love the way you framed it <laughs> because it gives me so much information and so much, I have so much to say on this topic. I did a podcast episode about this. Um, it was one of my first, actually. It's called You Deserve to Be Happy, but I'm going to revisit some of the <laughs> topics in there. Um, the first of which is you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be happy. Um, you said that, you know, one of the things you said was that you've been so unhappy for so long. And is that a good enough reason to leave? Yes, it is. It absolutely is. But I want to challenge and I'm going to push back on some of the other things that you said. So you said that you've been deeply unhappy for a really long time since the birth of your first child. He doesn't help Ever since you had kids, you have felt like a single parent. He doesn't help in the house. He sleeps all the time. And you feel guilty because he's a good dad. And this is what I want to push back on because I hear it all the time. But he's a good dad. Is he? 
does a good dad not participate in the house to the degree that he, that his partner feels like a single parent because if that's a good dad we have to we have to redefine what a good dad is so in my mind a good dad is a good partner a good dad uplifts and invests in the the mother of the children you do that for each other a good dad doesn't sleep all the time and and not participate in the house right a good dad is more than just he plays with the kids and he's really good with them no that is a very narrow definition of fatherhood and it's not acceptable because by the way who would accept that definition of motherhood who would ever ever accept the definition of motherhood as I play with my kids and like maybe I get up and I cook them breakfast, but otherwise I don't participate in the house or I don't participate in their schooling to the degree that my partner feels like a single dad. Would you say that's a good mother? Hell no. In no way in our society would we consider that person a good mother? We would lambast her. We would drag her, right? Now, I'm not saying that's correct, that we should <laughs> drag any woman for however she parents, right, or anyone else. But I just want to hold a, 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 like, shine a light on the fact that I hear all the time women say, but he's a good dad, but I feel like a single parent, but I'm so lonely, but he hasn't touched me or looked at me in, in years, that he's mean to me. He emotionally abuses me. I feel abandoned and neglected by him, but he's a good dad. No, he's not. <laughs> right? Maybe he plays with the kids. Like maybe he's an okay dad. He may not be a terrible dad. But I just want to I just want to like I just want to push back on that cuz I think we have to. Right? We 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 have to push back on that. We have to start pushing back on our expectations of men in relationships because at the end of the day we live in this in this deep deep white supremacist patri patriarchy that makes men, particularly white men, extremely entitled, extremely entitled. You know, I was talking to my dear friend Andrea Owen um, this morning, and we were talking about, you know, is he a narcissist or is he just raised in a patriarchy that makes him believe that he doesn't really have to work very hard for things, that he doesn't really quite have to try, right? We have, we're labeling everyone a narcissist when really maybe they're just, maybe the problem is more systemic, Maybe the problem is more the entitlement of men, and they don't actually know that they have to step up because probably they were raised in a household where, you know, their dad was in the, you know, lazy boy or, you know, out tinkering on the car or whatever the stereotype is, right? I don't know, but not actually participating in the cooking and the cleaning, right? Especially when you've got two working parents. But even if you don't, right, there is participation. And there, so this entitlement has gone on for so long that it's so, it is, it is soaked. Our society, our culture is soaked in it. And it's up to us at this point to say, no, that is not enough for me. It is not enough for me to have half of a partner or a quarter of a partner and not have an equal partner. And yes, that means that you also have to step up equally in the household. That means that. You know, women, I believe, and uh, you'll hear about this in a couple of weeks on the podcast, I believe all women should be working all the time. So yes, if we want to be equal partners, we have to we have to do equal work. And that is a topic for another time. But at the end of the day, Juliana, yes, it is enough because you deserve to be happy just as much as any man would be, right? You deserve fulfillment and happiness and you have got to find that for yourself so that your children are modeled what that looks like. The guilt that we have around leaving marriages um, that are good enough because we are drowning in misery, um, but, you know, we don't want to do that to our kids. I want to ask you, would, would you want this marriage and this feeling for your children? 
what would you tell your best friend? Because your husband, he may be a good enough dad, a good enough partner. I think you said he has moments of being a good partner. (laughs) And, you know, moments aren't good enough. And what you're modeling to your kids is that moments are good enough. Moments are enough. He has moments of being a good dad. He has moments of being a good husband. And you're telling your kids that that moments are good enough. And then your children will repeat this pattern because that's what we do. So if you want this marriage for your kids, if this is good enough for your kids, then sure, go ahead, you know, stay here, truly. And if it's not what you want for your kids, if you would not choose this marriage for your kids, please don't choose it for yourself. Please don't. And it's not just about you and your satisfaction and your happiness. It's about it's about them and the legacy and the patterns that will be repeated throughout their lifetimes. This relationship, as you said, doesn't serve you. So much so that you're not even willing to work on it anymore. You have nothing left to give to it. So if you're not willing to work on it, because relationships require that, the healthiest relationships I know are in couples therapy, you know, when they need it, sometimes consistently. But if you're no longer even willing to work on the relationship because it doesn't serve you at all, you need to reevaluate what this whole what the whole thing is and why you would ever consider staying And I think that's a lot of cultural conditioning about, you know, who women believe, you know, we are supposed to give up everything. We are supposed to sacrifice everything for our children and for our spouses, right? And to be mothers and, and, you know, what is a good mother? And I call bullshit. I call bullshit on it all. I hope that helps, Juliana. It might not be the answer that you're looking for, but I also think it kind of is the answer you're looking for in one way or another. So thank you so much. And now a word from our sponsor, the Divorce Survival Program. Now that you know that divorce is on the horizon, you need to get up to speed on how all of this works. Stat. You probably have a million and one questions swirling through your head from how and when do we tell the kids to will my ex and I ever get along again and just about everything in between. You've got legal questions, you've got financial questions, and you've got a whole host of questions about your kids. And that doesn't even touch how you'll start your life over again. Lucky for you, I have the answers to all of your questions. As one of the pioneers of the divorce coaching industry, I've been helping women navigate the divorce process for the last decade. And now, for the first time ever, all of my divorce wisdom is available in one online program. The Divorce Survival Program will help you process the emotional fallout of your divorce so you don't go into mediation bitter or resentful. It'll help you understand the difference between litigation, mediation, collaborative divorce, and identify which is right for you. It'll help you tell your husband you want a divorce in a way that doesn't keep you stuck in a circular conversation for the next three months. It'll help you tell your kids you're getting a divorce in a way that won't completely break them. It'll help you understand how your divorce will impact your friends and family and what conversations are appropriate to have with each. It'll help you create appropriate and healthy boundaries with your ex and learn about dating after divorce and how that will affect you, your kids, and yes, even your ex. But most important, the most important thing this program will help you do is protect your children from any unnecessary fallout from an ugly and contentious divorce litigation. And that, my love, is fucking priceless. So sign up today. Go to kateanthony.com slash getting divorced and don't forget to use the code DSG pod for $50 off. That's DSG pod divorce survival guide podcast because that's where you heard it. DSG pod will give you $50 off. So once again, that's kateanthony.com slash getting divorced. And now back to our episode. Our next question did not leave her name which is okay. And so here is here is Anonymous's question. Hi, Kate. I'm so happy for all that you do for women. I love your podcast. But my question to you is, although I have many, one that I'm going through right now is, do I change my last name? 
married for 28 years, four children. I am 54 years old. Just don't know if it's worth it. So here's what I have to say about your name. First of all, you can change your name to whatever the fuck you want. It's your name. (laughs) So in a word. But the question is, what do you want, right? Let's talk about first the idea that we changed our name to begin with. The idea that women take on men's names to begin with is antiquated. It is it relegates us to property. We shouldn't be doing it. We shouldn't be we should not be in this um, situation to begin with. So it's and it's really it's it's a shame. And what's what's even more of a shame is that I've heard that you can do it when you get divorced. It's really easy to just do it then. But if you want to do it later, they make it very difficult. So I don't know if that's true everywhere. um, But I have I have heard that you're 54 years old. You were married for 28 years and you have four kids. Now, the one thing I want to address is I hear all the time from women, especially women in my group, that they don't want to have a different last name than their children. And what I want to say to that is no one gives a shit. Your kids don't care. I have never had the same. I didn't have the same last name as my mother. And my son doesn't have the same last last name as me because my mom never changed her name. I never changed my name. And my son never cared, literally never cared. Now, he was three when I got divorced. And so, you know, maybe if it had changed, but, you know, still, he never asked. What we did was we actually came up with um, when he was little, we came up with a with a comp- with a little combo name um, that he made up. And so that was our family name. But, it, you know, you're 54 years old and you have been one you've had one name for 28 years. The question is, do, does this name feel like yours at this point? Would changing your name back give you a sense of freedom and autonomy, or would it make you feel not quite like yourself? Which name feels like you? I would actually encourage you to speak it aloud. Introduce yourself, right? Say, you know, I'm I'm so and so, and you know, your married name, and then hi, I'm so and so, your maiden name, and try them on. Try them on and see how they feel in your body. Um, and, or just close your eyes and say them over and over again in your head and notice which feels right to you. One might give you a little rush of excitement. One might feel like the comfort of home. Um, it's your name and you get to say, um, by the way, I had a, um, a, a in my Facebook group, a woman <laughs> posted months ago that her husband said, if you leave me, you don't, you don't get to keep, you don't get to keep my name. Like I'm taking it back. (laughs) We were like, doesn't work that way. It literally doesn't work that way. It's your name and you do what feels best to you and only you know what will feel best. And so I encourage you to really, um, to sit with it. But if you want to change it, so since you have four kids, I'm assuming they're, you know, old enough um, to have this conversation with, uh, you know, ask them how they feel, how they would feel about it. Um, That might be, say, I'm really thinking about doing this and I just want to run it by you. I'm not asking your permission, but I want to know how you feel, how it would make you feel. I may do it anyway. But um, maybe maybe um, have that conversation with them after you already know how you feel about it. So really, really dig deep for that one. Um, But again, it's your name and you get to have whatever name you want. Okay, so now we're going to hear from Sonia in Central Oregon. Here's Sonia's question. Hi, Kate. My name is Sonia. Uh, My question is that uh, I've been moving towards a divorce at a glacial but steady pace over the past few years. Um, And time and time again, my spouse acts completely surprised by talk of divorce. This despite being in separate bedrooms, no physical contact for three years, and divorce has been brought up multiple times. But he seems to hear it and then go into extreme denial. And in this, I find myself kind of have, I found myself questioning, did I relay it wrong and kind of doubting myself? And I'm trying not to do that, but I'm very curious as to what goes on in someone's head that is in such denial. And in, from the Facebook group, it seems like there's a number of people 
that have similar situations. And I mean, I obviously it, it has some success rate because here I am, I am still married three years into this. I have this curiosity in, in understanding that. And I would love to have a podcast on, on the denial of a spouse and I'm just kind of trying to understand where they're coming from and then maybe how to best deal with it. That's all. I appreciate all that you do. It's always an amazing support system. Thank you. Okay, Sonia. So, whew, yeah, this is a good one, right? Um, and I want to address the the first thing I want to address is your question, what goes on in their head? And I am not going to answer that. I am not going to do a podcast about what goes on in someone's head when they're in denial, because I can tell you, well, I mean, I maybe I will. They're they are they're in they're in denial. And it's a manipulation tactic. Their denial is a manipulation tactic. Their denial, when you have said it over and over and over again, um, they are manipulating you because you actually haven't done it yet. So because they're doing it over and over and over again, their denial, right? He's your he's in denial. He's always surprised. Well, of course he is. You haven't left. His denial and his surprise and, and whatever he's doing is working. It's been three years, Sonia. Three years. Whatever he's doing is working for him, which is why he keeps doing it. So that's what's going on in his head. They are always surprised. They're always surprised. They're especially surprised. Let me tell you, you haven't seen surprised yet until you actually pack your bags <laughs> and move out um, or file, you know, file papers or you finally have that final conversation. You know, you said you were questioning how you're relaying it. Yes, you should be questioning how you're relaying it because it's not just how you relay it. It's how it's what you do next. You don't have it's not about just saying it. It's about saying it and then taking the action. The biggest mistake that I see women make is that they they sort of relay the information and then they kind of expect that their husband is going to be in agreement or be completely in, in acceptance and understanding and then like maybe do it for them. Like maybe then be like, OK, so I guess we need to file. All right. Let me get on that. Fuck no. That's not how this works, especially if you are with – look, if you are with somebody who is loving and kind and loves you enough to let you go, if you are married to someone who really adores you and is an amazing human being and all of those things, but you just don't feel it and you need to let them go, their response will probably be, you know, okay, this hurts, this is awful – but I want you to be happy and I don't want to be with someone who doesn't love me the way that I want to be loved. And so, OK, what do we need to do? That's not what we're dealing with here. What we're dealing with here is somebody who is um, in denial and being manipulative. I highly, 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 y'all, my program, the Divorce Survival Program, the very first module, I think, is how to have this conversation in the most concrete way possible, and then how to handle and walk through every one of their reactions. But for now, so, so Sonia, first of all, if you're not in that program, uh, get in that program, and it will help you move forward. Because if you've been in the same place for three years, and you have been sort of skipping the record back and, you know, in the same groove... For three years, then you need a, a gentle prod to to skip skip the record player forward a little bit, like skip that needle forward. Am I am I showing my age because I'm using a, a record player metaphor? They're coming back though, right? Like everyone's back on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here's the deal: it's not about what's going on in his head, Sonia. It's what's going on in yours. What is going on in your head that you are expecting? a different result. You've had the same conversation over and over and over again, and he's always surprised. So the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You've been getting the same result for three years. So, so the time is now for you to do something different. And what I want you to do is have the conversation in a way 
that is not questionable. If you're in my Facebook group, there is a link to the podcast and the um, blog post that I wrote on how to tell your husband you want a divorce. Uh, But I really do highly recommend that you get into the Divorce Survival Program because it'll go a lot deeper into it. Then take action. Don't wait. You know, your next conversation should be, hey, so listen, I've said this a bunch of times and I feel like maybe you're not hearing me. And yes, it's true. I haven't actually made any moves. So I'm actually ready to make some moves now. And I want to let you know that I'm going to be moving forward with filing for divorce. And I really hope that we can mediate this. And I really hope that I don't have to have you served or, you know, that it be litigious. Um, But I want you to know that I'm moving forward. And this may seem like a shock to you, um, as it always does when we have this conversation. So I'm going to give you about a week to sort of process the fact that I am serious about this. And then on next week, on this day and time, I want us to sit down and have a conversation about how we're going to proceed. And then when you sit down at the kitchen table with him in a week, I want you to have a map. I want you to take the reins of this. I want you to have the map of how you want it to go. Hey, I spoke with a mediator I think is kind of cool. You should call call this number if we're going to, you know, I hope we can mediate for, um, you didn't say if you have kids or not, but I, um, if you do, then for the sake of the children, I want to, you know, do this really well. And depending on how, what his reaction is, doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're still moving forward. Whether it's mediation or litigation, if he goes off the rails, then you hire a lawyer. But the way that you can, the way that you say it can help form and shape how he responds. And again, that's in that blog post, in that podcast episode, both of which we will link in the show notes. Um, They're in the guides in the Facebook group. And again, much deeper exploration in the divorce survival program um, on how to do that. But bottom line is you have to stick to your guns. And you have to make this happen. You have to take action. He will never do it for you. And what's going on in his head is it's working. (laughs) All right, my loves. Again, if you have questions for me that you want me to answer on the air, go to my website, kateanthony.com slash questions. Again, there will be a link in the show notes for that. And I will answer them on the air next month. Um, Hopefully we'll get to do this once a month, depending on how many questions come in. I love and adore you all. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. New listeners, welcome. I'm so thrilled. There's four years of content for you to to consume. Um, It's a lot, but it's well worth it. And for those of you who have been along for the ride, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And happy, happy birthday to my lovely baby, the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. Thanks, all. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Divorce Survival Guide podcast. If you like what you hear, head on over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in and leave me a review. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the Divorce Survival Guide. I'll see you next time. And until then, remember, you, my love, deserve to be happy.